Good morning everyone, welcome back. Uh, Monday morning and it is something different to start off this week. So we are delivering potatoes. Uh, we collected from Hereford uh, Farm just outside Hereford last week. They're Marfona's. Um, just giving them to people around the village who are uh, some way related to the farm or to the estate, either past or present. Uh, so the gamekeepers and people like that and uh, people who work in the office. So. Um, yeah, that's that's the first job of the day. So um, I've actually been telling everyone that it's my favorite job on the farm, even though I drive the potato harvester, uh, the fertilizer spreader, but I'm now considering moving or changing career to be a, a postman, even though uh, to be fair, Paul is the one who's doing most of the work. So yeah, we're just working our way around the estate and through the village, um, giving spuds to people. But yeah, they're um, they're not our own spuds, like I said, they're from a farm just out, literally just outside Hereford. They're basically being surrounded by uh, houses. I think they grow about 20 acres each year. They uh, harvest them um, and then bag them up themselves and uh, and sell them on to anyone who wants them, really. So we've got 40 here and uh, yeah, just wandering around. But it's my favorite thing because we get Paul in here who's lived around here for ages and uh, you know he can point things out to me and I'm slowly building up knowledge of the area as well like who lives where and who's done what and all that sort of stuff so yeah we've been over to like another estate as well um, so yeah no really enjoy it and this is our last week now before Christmas um, so uh, yeah we'll finish on Thursday evening this week and um, yeah, I'll probably speak a bit more about it in the rest of the video, but um, there's a little, I'd quite like people to to do something, so look out for that in the end of the video. But yeah, delivering spuds, and next job we will uh, we'll move on now, so yeah. Right, so here we are, here's our Bailey low loader. I thought I would show you and just give you a quick walk around it. Uh, we got it earlier this year, 2019 predominantly used for moving fertilizer as you can see uh, but also use it to move seed bags um, potato boxes and also machinery when required so pretty useful trader actually and uh, it's been a good asset to the farm it's we used to move these around in um, in the grain trailers which was a pain you couldn't get as many on and it was also difficult fishing them out so definitely a good asset to have and um, we got it from Len Evans um, little storage cupboard here which I will show you just twist these like that ratchet straps um, ratchets and a couple of blocks of wood nice and handy um, but yeah no it's been a very good trailer these are good and bad I'm just gonna get my phone out because I can't see the screen's gone black see that I'm actually recording something half decent there we go um, they do stick out a surprising amount which when you're going down a tight lane um, I suppose it's quite easy to get them knocked off by branches things like that um, hope you like my strapping I'm only going a couple of miles down the road moving it to the other yard so I haven't gone full board on it and then in there which is locked we've got the ramps for the back which on your own are quite difficult it's not the best design um, you can get them out which is fine put them on the back they hook on here you can see we've got these legs here which we can put down <coughs> excuse me uh, and then you can see we've had them on the back here one on that side one on that side and then you can get a man or two up and it's sort of like a one-man job moving to Fert then um, don't know yeah quite who designed it but when you go to put them back and you've got the manito off you can slide the it'd be better if i could show you but it's locked and i've got the key um anyway you can slide them back on top there's obviously two and it's okay but when you're putting the manito on uh and then trying to get them back on they're quite heavy and they're quite awkward to get in there so that is one downside for sure of the trailer um the other downside is the uh is the shoe which bear with me as i go around back around the other side but you can see you've got 24 fur bags on here and uh, if i really wanted i could get another row on so um but the shoe then goes under here which is just, just the most awkward place to put it 
it obviously tucks it out of the way, but getting it on the little pin is incredibly difficult. And then you've got to drop it down and getting it back on here uh, on your own is an absolute nightmare. So that is one, one downside uh, of the Bailey. But otherwise, yeah, very useful. And we'll take it back to the farm now and uh, get this unloaded and stack up there. Thursday morning now approaching lunchtime and we're just heading off to Len Evans to collect some parts for the potato gear uh, more specifically the bed tiller and um, yeah it's our final day before we break up we break up uh, today and end, end of today and it'll be good to have a bit of a break over Christmas for sure obviously stock farmers aren't so fortunate but we're able to have a bit of a quieter period now so um, it gives us time to have some time off which is good and yeah i while i'm driving i'm gonna show you the video of the plastic recycling that i mentioned in last week's video and like an idiot completely forgot to put in uh, i did actually watch the video through but it just uh obviously went over my head about putting it in so uh, it was quite a quite a nice rig it was a 32 30 fast track with a, a trailer on designed for plastic collection and um I've been informed as well that they're based in Ledbury and not Lempster and I of course would not want to give you false information so they are a Ledbury based company and not Lempster as I previously said so uh, you can uh, you can blame Paul for that one uh, who's lived around here all his life and still told me the wrong thing there we go um, I've also had a question from someone called Rory Poacher that is off the top of my head so uh, hopefully that's right saying um, he was just getting into farming and wanted some tips on loading grain lorries um, as we go past. Is this a grain lorry? No, this is gonna be a wood lorry. Yeah. Um, just wanted some tips on loading grain lorries. So uh, I'm no expert, but I sort of was taught by someone and uh, I've tried to stick by those things. So the three, the three key points I would say uh, is number one take your time never never feel rushed by a lorry driver um, just take your time and go steady number two is get the machine right up to the or the front wheels of the telehandler I'm gonna assume you'd load with the telehandler but anyway get the front wheels of the telehandler up somewhere near the lorry uh, so that you're less likely to spill the grain over the other side or over your side and also you'll get to know this is not a this is a a little bit on but um, an added bonus if you like you'll get to know with the buckets you're loading with uh, how many bucket loads in the front back and middle uh, it takes to fill a lorry who usually take about they can take up to 29 ton in the trailer so um, you'll once you've done it a few times maybe 10 times or something you'll start understanding right I've got to put nine bucket loads here um, so that was number two get up nice and close so so yeah, and number three is, uh, like I just said, so you start by loading the front of the lorry because when they start getting more full, um, they're gonna lift the lorry up to, or the, they'll lift the trailer up to weigh it to make sure they're not overweight. And obviously the front end goes up, so then you'll have higher to tip it. So load the front first, then the back, and then fill in the middle if you need to. So um, yeah, they're my tips, they're my tips. And also another bonus tip, if it's raining, uh, just put one bucket load in the front, one in the middle, and one at the back, uh, just to cover the floor to keep everything nice and dry, make sure it's not sticky. Um, 
and then yeah carry on load load the front fully load the back and the middle so they're my tips and um, we are now approaching Lan Evans so I will go and get what I need to hope that helps Rory just here in Lan Evans if you've never seen the yard that's what it looks like they're obviously mainly grimy dealers there's a, a spud harvester like ours GT 170 uh, but they also do Case and Bailey, so uh, this is a brand new 19 plate 220 Puma. Obviously see them a lot on Johnny 1388 videos, I think they've got some. Um, there's a new controller multi-set is it? I don't know. Not multi-set, that's for the spud stuff. Multi-joystick something. Anyway, pretty nice. Lots of bits to play around with. Nice and spacious, never really driven one. They look they're pretty beefy compared with a similar size horsepower Fent, feels a lot smaller, so um, yeah. Anyway, there's a very quick video of a Puma 220. Tidy, there's a Maxim 125 there. That's like a basic spec one. I had a quick sit, sit in there. Uh, not sure what that one is ahead, but yeah, brand new, brand new Puma. There we go, I'll get on with some work. there we go we have given the fence a bit of a, a wash pre-Christmas uh, it wasn't as in-depth a wash as I would have liked but uh, yeah as you can see we are running out of daylight and um, it's almost time to go home so we'll give it a proper it'll be back on the potatoes um, when they get graded out I'd imagine so we'll give it a proper wash in sort of February time or something uh, but yeah anyway I mentioned right at the start of the video about something that I would like you to do. And um, it's very fitting that, to be honest, it's been raining all afternoon, it's been horrible and wet. And um, it's basically how the last quarter of the year has gone. It's just been horrible and wet, uh, as many of you will have known. But what I'd like to do is put out a video just before New Year's uh, sort of like a, a review of 2019 if you like and what I'd like you to do is send me an email or yeah probably an email is best and I'll put that in the uh, description below with three photos of three of your favorite farming or countryside photos of 2019 something you look back upon fondly um, and I'd like to do a video on on that and see what everyone's favorite moment of or favorite three moments of 2019 have been so we can look back upon them and uh, try and look back look look back upon the uh, the better times rather than the last four months which have been uh, pretty sodden so um, so yeah that is what I would like you to do and then I'll publish the video probably um, yeah just before New Year's and um, yeah hopefully we'll get a get a good video out of it so send in three photos and also what I'd like you to include is um, your name or your YouTube channel you can just put your first name if you want so Tom or I don't know whatever you want to let's think of another weird name Patricia uh, or you can put your surname or your YouTube name or whatever and then I'd also like you to put the location so everyone's got a bit of an idea of where the picture was taken uh, so for example, you don't have to be specific, but put Herefordshire or put West Midlands um, just so people have an idea of where the picture was taken. So yeah, anyway, heading back to the farm now and we will just uh, grease the tractor up, we'll probably do a few pins here and there, as Matthew goes, um, and tuck it away for winter and that will be us done for 2019. 
Um, now, as I might also, the other thing to mention is have a bit of a slow start to 2020, as in getting these videos out, because uh, I'm, I'm off to do a fertilizer course for a week. Um, so it's gonna take me a little while to get back into them, but just bear with me and, uh, and then we'll continue with them into 2020 because I've enjoyed them. So thank you very much for watching and yeah send me some videos uh, some not some videos send me some pictures and we'll get that one last video out for 2019